Hi y'all, in this video we will talk about register. You may think register are, let's call it, simple components, basic components, which I think it's kind of true, but you can always dig deeper. But first, remember to subscribe. Let's start from the basics. A register is a component used to limit the current in a circuit. The higher the resistors, the less the current will flow. This is resumed by the Ohm's law, the famous V equals R times I. We can either connect the resistors in series or in parallel. If we connect in series, the total resistance will be R equals R1 plus R2. If we parallel the resistors, we have the following formula. But if we parallel two equal resistors, we have R parallel equals R over 2. Or for N components, R over N. Commercial resistors can vary from 0 to more than 1 giga ohm, and all my team are reaching 10 tera ohm. Obviously, we can use a series of parallel resistors if we want a specific value. For example, let's say we want to obtain a 9 ohm resistor. We can add in series a 3.9 ohm and a 5.1 ohm resistor. Or we can parallel 2 18 ohm resistor or 3 27 ohm resistor. You could buy a 9 ohm resistor if you want, but this will probably cost you more since it's not a standard value. The tolerance of a resistor is expressed with a percentage, and it tells us how much the actual real value will differ from the theoretical value. Let's say we have a 100 ohm resistor with a tolerance of 10%. The real measured value will then be something in between 90 ohm and 110 ohm. Nowadays, the tolerance of 10% is too much and practically unused. In fact, it's really common and cheap to buy a resistor with a tolerance of 5% and even 1%. As before, a 100 ohm resistor with a tolerance of 1% can be anywhere in between 99 ohm and 101 ohm. Pretty good, huh? Then, for more precise circuits, we have tolerances of 0.5% and 0.1%. Those are considered fairly precise resistors. We can then take a step above with the 0.05% and 0.01% resistor. Now our 100 ohm will be something between 99.99 ohm and 100.01 ohm, a tiny bit of the theoretical value. They found application in some lab equipment. The top class A resistor can reach even lower tolerances. We say, for example, have 0.005% and even lower resistor. Let's start talking about TENCO or TCR, that is, the variation of resistance within temperature, normally expressed in ppm over degrees Celsius or parts per million over degrees Celsius. It's fairly common to have a temp of 100 to 300 ppm. 100 ppm is equal to 0.01%. Our 100 ohm resistor with a temp of 100 ppm and a temperature rise of 10 degrees Celsius in respect to ambient temperature, we have a variation in resistance of about 0.1%, excluding tolerances. If then the temperature increases by another 10 degrees Celsius, we have a variation in resistance of 0.2%, and so on. If we need more precision, we can use lower time core resistors. There are 25, 10, and even 5 ppm over degrees Celsius resistors. Vichet, for example, has also special hermetically sealed the resistor with a time core of essentially zero. It's then obvious that we shouldn't place high time core resistors close to heat source. Let's do another example. A resistor of 100 ohm with a tolerance of 1% and a temp of 100 ppm over degrees Celsius with a temperature rise of 30 degrees Celsius in respect to ambient has a real resistance of 1.3% the theoretical value, that is something from 98.7 ohm to 101.3 ohm. Another important aspect when selecting a resistor is power rating. Every resistor can in fact dissipate on the limited amount of power, which is calculated by P equals R times I squared. So let's say our application needs a true home resistor handling 0.5 amp. By using a formula, we need a true home 500 milliwatt resistor. In reality, based on the application, you will stay typically at 80% to 50% the maximum power. So you will need either a 625 milliwatts or a 1 watts resistor. 
When it comes to power, we have a resistor from 100 milliwatts and below to a huge resistor with 1 kilowatt of power dissipation, often called rheostat. Also, don't forget we can power the resistor to increase power. The total power will be P times N. For example, if you desire the resistor is a 5 ohm 1 watt resistor, you could power it to 10 ohm 500 milliwatt resistors or 4 20 ohm 250 milliwatt resistor and so on. Power is often described as a parameter in respect to a temperature that is often 25 degrees Celsius. But for precision resistors, they can guarantee a value for higher temperature. Like in this example, we say guarantees us a 1 watt of power even at about 75 degrees Celsius. You can literally burn it. Resistors, in particular, as in this one, can only withstand a limited amount of voltage on its hands, although most of the time sufficient. It's common for a 1206 package to handle a maximum voltage of 200 volts while 0402 can only handle 50 volts, whereas THT1s can handle even thousands of volts. Of course, you can use series connection to increase this voltage. Let's take a look at this uniroyal data sheet. As you can see, for every package we have the various voltages that can withstand. We stick to the lower one. So standard resistors are packed together in series called standard series or E-series. We have E3, E6, E12, E24, E48, E96 and E192 series. It might surprise you that the 9 ohm resistor is not a standard value, whereas 1 ohm and 2 ohms are standard. And we have also stranger standard values like 178 ohm or 898 ohm. The resistance can be whatever the application needs, but I suggest you to stick with standard value of the resistors mainly because they are cheaper and produced by any resistor manufacturer. Most of the time it's sufficient to pay attention to what we say so far. Sometimes, however, we need to take into account some aspects. In fact, resistors are not only resistors, they also exhibit some parasitic inductance and capacitance. To avoid this, we use SMDs because they don't have the long leads that THT ones have. A clear example of high inductance resistors are the wire wound ones, used mainly for their high power dissipation rating. So SMDs are also good for high frequency stuff. But if you care about parasitics, there are also special resistors from various manufacturers that claim lower inductance and capacitance. For general low power application, we also have resistors arrays that are multiple resistors in a single package either in SMD or THT format. They can have from 2 up to 16 resistors in a single package, useful when you want to, let's say, let multiple LEDs, and you want to do it uh, with a single package. Those resistors can be either completely unconnected from each other or have one end tied up together. We also have zero home resistors that we don't use as a resistor. Remember Bob? No? Go check out my already established video about the zero home resistor. Of course, all of what's said for fixed resistors is true also for variable ones. We have tolerances, TCR, power ratings, parasitics, and we can find it either in SMT or THT packages and so on. Okay guys, hope you learned something. Subscribe and see you next time.